Rick Goldring, and welcome to Burlington Matters. Burlington Matters is a local community television program that I host here on TV Kojiko, uh, featuring topical discussion about issues and news and events happening within the city of Burlington. Today our focus will be on health, and specifically public health. In the region of Halton, in the city of Burlington, we are in two-tier government, which means that the city of Burlington provides a certain set of services to the residents of Burlington, and so does Halton Region for all of Halton Region, including Burlington. So we're going to be talking about public health today, and with us today are three guests from the Public Health Department. Uh, first of all, to my left is health promoter Kendra Willard, and we also have two public health nurses with us, uh, Karen Hay, along with Jane Smithson. So welcome, ladies, and I'm looking forward to our, uh, our discussion today. Uh, in preparation for the show, I went on to just my iPhone just before we went on here, and there's a definition on Wikipedia of public health I just want to read off. It says, public health refers to the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting health through organized efforts and informed choices of society, organizations, public and private, communities, and individuals. Fair definition? Yeah. yeah Covers it all? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty broad, yeah. right? Yeah. Very, yeah. So, in the region of Halton, there is there's a budget. I checked on the uh, the website of the of the region before I uh, got on the show here. Sixteen and a half million dollars is invested in public health each year. A whole bunch of different programs, uh, ranging from uh, um, an analysis of chronic disease risk factors and dental health, emergency preparedness, environmental health, and so on and so forth. Um, all of you work in specific areas, and Kendra, you're a health promoter. So why don't you define, Kendra, what a health promoter is? Uh, I'd go back to the definition of health promotion. So that is about increasing people's control over their own health and their determinants of health. And so when we look at things like obesity, we're looking at what factors contribute to that. So let's, let's talk about obesity. So in the province of Ontario, it's my understanding that, that, that um, uh, I forget the percentage, you can, you'll know better than me, but the percentage of people in Ontario and the percentage of people in Halton that are overweight are obese. and it's surprising I think to most people when they know the percentage. What is the percentage in Halton? In Halton we have a survey that um, uh, asks adults to self-report their height and weight and we found that uh, obesity rates are steadily increasing over time. In 2001 our rates were at 12 percent for adults and in 2014 they've, rose, they've risen significantly to 19 percent. And this is self-reporting? Yes. And usually we're a little kinder to ourselves, yes. right? Yes. Um, if we're obese we might just say we're overweight. Right. And if we think we're fine we still may be overweight. Right. But this is measuring height and weight. So yeah, there, is, there are issues with self-reporting, but sometimes that's the best data that we have. So I, I've heard other public health officials, not necessarily in Canada, but, but I think in the States, talking about obesity as the new smoking. Mm -hmm. That the impacts of obesity and, and people being overweight is a significant, if not greater, than what smoking used to be. Is that a fair comment? Um, I, I try not to mix the two, honestly. I think that the direct impact of smoking is still quite strong, not necessarily the new smoking, but it is important and it is complex and that's why we as a health department are trying to address it. So what do you do in the health department? So you, you, you've got the whole region of Halton, all four local municipalities from Halton Hills, Milton, Burlington and Oakville that you're responsible for. How do you promote healthy weight um, in the region? Um, Great question. Uh, we really do focus on prevention. So in public health we are, as I said, focused on prevention and so we know that if you're overweight or obese as a child, you're higher, greater likelihood to be overweight or obese as an adult. So creating supportive environments for healthy families and children has that um, a positive effect across the lifespan in terms of maintaining healthy weights and reducing our risk of chronic disease. Um, <clears throat> Does that answer your question? That, that, that helps a okay. lot. And we'll come back to you and, and talk to you more about uh, obesity and other other related issues. And Karen, you're with a program called Halton Parents. Yes, I am. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. Halton Parents is a continuum of programs and services that support parents all across Halton region. And Halton Parents is staffed by public health nurses like myself, as well as public health dietitians. And what's really important. People tend to think of public health at the beginning when you have your baby, um, but we're here for your entire parenting journey from when you're thinking about having a baby to raising teenagers. 
So, t so tell us about that. I, I, I'm certainly aware. I remember my first daughter, our first daughter was born. Uh, we got a call from the Halton yeah. Region Public Health Department and somebody came and visited right. us and gave yeah. us a little bit of coaching. Yeah. Um, and now, uh, you know, a generation later, um, some of my stepkids are having children and they're actually employing a sleep coach, which I've, I've never heard of, <laughs> um, but you, that you may have heard of. Yes. But in, in any event, uh, so what are, how, how do people get in, uh, connected with Halton Region with regard to this particular program as far as the Halton Parents Program right. and, and how do you reach out and connect uh, with parents throughout the continuum? Mm -hmm. Well, we support parents um, all along the continuum and there's a variety of ways that we support them. So we support them uh, in person, so face-to-face -face programs that they can uh, participate in. We support parents on uh, the telephone. They can call us and connect with us, um, as well as lots of online supports and services for them. So getting in touch with us can be easy as clicking on the website, which is halton.ca slash haltonparents. As simple as picking up the telephone and giving us a phone call and dialing 311 um, and then attending some of our programs and services that we have all across Halton including in Burlington of course. Great. So I, I had no idea that the range of services were offered not just for young babies but for parents throughout throughout the, the raising. Very what about the, those challenging teenage years? Do you have any, have any uh, <laughs> wisdom around that? Oh, to have a parent myself who's just lived through those years, uh, definitely. But uh, so being in, in addition to being involved with young families, our public health nurses are very involved in the school system. So we work in collaboration uh, very closely with the Halton District School Board and the Halton Catholic District School Board to really support the unique needs of that school community. So we work together. So whether whether a school is looking for support around maybe a bullying issue or around uh, stress and anxiety. Um, we really work closely with the school system to support children from when they enter in kindergarten uh, right up until high school. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Jane, you're involved with uh, promoting low risk drinking guidelines and recently at the Health and Social Services Committee, uh, the committee dealt with a particular report. Uh, on, on low risk drinking guidelines and that went to regional council and that certainly was, was approved. Can you tell us about that and how, how those low risk drinking guidelines evolved? Um, sure, so the low risk alcohol drinking guidelines was established in 2007 to promote moderate consumption. Um, the low risk alcohol drinking guidelines are intended for healthy adults 19 to 64 years of age. Um, they, again, promote moderation and responsible drinking. Um, I guess um, they help people decide how much to drink, when to drink or not. Um, now, the, we need these guidelines because there are some long-term and short-term health risks associated um, with our health. So the uh, long-term alcohol use can increase different types of cancers. They can lead to um, other serious conditions such as um, pancreatitis, uh, liver cirrhosis, diabetes, um, and short-term health risks um, when drinking uh, can increase a, have an increased risk of injuries associated with motor vehicle crashes as well as um, intentional or unintentional injury as well as other harms associated with alcohol poisoning. Um, so this is why these are important to have and for the public to know about them. So it's interesting, you said 19 to 64, and I'm thinking, well, people don't, if they've been drinking at 64 and they've been you know, drinking alcohol, they don't stop drinking at 65. Uh, is there a different standard uh, after 65? Um, so we don't have any guidelines for 65 plus, um, so that is something that um, will have to be looked at. Um, there is a um, national alcohol policy, um, sorry, not, not national, sorry, a provincial alcohol policy being looked at. Um, so hopefully it, it will include the, those 65 plus age group. How, how severe is the issue of overconsumption of alcohol in Halton Region compared to other areas in the, in the province of Ontario? Um, so I can speak to um, Halton uh, rates as well as uh, the Ontario rates. Um, so it, in 2013 to 2014, 26% um, of Halton adults reported exceeding the low risk alcohol drinking guidelines. 
Um, there is no statistically significant difference between the Halton and Ontario percent of adults who reported exceeding the guidelines. Um, so Halton being at 46 percent and Ontario being at 43 percent. Um, we know that uh, Halton males re um, reported uh, exceeding the low risk alcohol drinking guidelines more so than females at 53 percent and females at um, 47 percent. So but it's about half the population is, yes. is exceeding the guidelines is what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think there needs to be um, more awareness on what a standard drink includes. Uh, but I can also share that the percent of Halton adults who reported exceeding the guidelines um, decreased with age. So uh, we know that there's a statistically significant difference between age groups. So for um, the ages of 19 to 24, 78 percent of those individuals are exceeding the guidelines when compared to 65 plus at uh, 25 percent. And also um, the guidelines uh, are exceeded when, uh, sorry, the percent of adults who exceed the low risk alcohol drinking guidelines increases as income increases. So for the, um, and there is a statistically significant difference between adults in the low income group and the high income group. So low being at 33 and high being at 58 percent. So it's affluence, it's money that, that allows people to, to indulge more in alcohol, yes. is what you're saying. Yeah, so you have the means. Yeah. To so so very, very briefly, what are, the, what are the guidelines now? Okay, so there are actually five guidelines. I'm glad you asked, because I think this is important for people to know. Um, so the first one involves daily and weekly limits for men and women. So we want to decrease our long-term health risk by drinking no more than 10 drinks a week for women. So that's two drinks a day on most days. 15 drinks a week for men, no more than three in a day um, on most days, and plan on having non-drinking days throughout the week to avoid developing a habit. Uh, the second guideline involves special occasions. So uh, for women, they should have no more than three drinks at one time, and for men, uh, no more than four drinks at one time. And you want to plan on drinking um, in a safe environment and stick to those weekly limits. And I should also mention that special occasion doesn't mean Friday night. Right. Um, it's something like a, a, a wedding, a wedding, for example. Occasion, yes. Birthday party. <laughs> yeah. And 60th that, birthday party. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And the, the a third guideline recommends when zero should be the limit. So do not drink alcohol when you're driving a vehicle, when you're operating machinery or tools. Um, when you're taking medication or other drugs that interact with alcohol, uh, when you're um, pregnant or planning on becoming pregnant, responsible for the safety of others, um, or making important decisions. Great. Uh, oh, I should mention two more things. Third, the, the fourth guideline um, recommends when zero um, is safest. So if you're pregnant, planning on becoming pregnant or breastfeeding, um, the best choice is obviously not to drink any alcohol and the fifth guideline recommends delaying the onset of drinking. So the um, Ontario, um, uh, so you're allowed to drink at 19 years of age for Ontario. But if you delay the commencement of, of drinking alcohol to 10 years after age 19, it's likely you, you, you will consume less in your lifetime. Yeah and your volumes of drinking will be less. And very quickly, what, how do you define a drink? Because some people think like uh, 12 ounces yeah. is a glass of wine. And that's yeah. not, and that's, yeah. not a, that's, not, that's like two servings of wine, isn't it? Yes. Or maybe well, even three servings of wine. So again, great question. I, um, and important for people to know because they're not aware. And um, so a, uh, a glass of beer, cider, or cooler would be 12 ounces right. of 5% alcohol content. Right. For wine, that would be five ounces of 12% alcohol content. And for distilled alcohol, so uh, rye, um, uh, vodka, um, that would be 1.5 ounces of 40% alcohol content. And um, it's important to know because when you go to a restaurant, for example, yes. uh, and you order a glass of wine, you may have a waiter asking you, would you, you like? Nine ounces. Exactly. Yeah. And so you're, you're, uh, it's just uh, for people to be, make safe choice and, yeah. and to be aware of how much they're drinking. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, great discussion with uh, folks from the Public Region Health Department for Halton Region. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back on Burlington Matters. 
Welcome back to Burlington Matters. I'm Mayor Rick Goldring, and with me today are three guests from the Public Health Department of the Halton Region. We have Kendra Willard, a health promoter, and two public health nurses, Karen Hay and Jane Smithson. Um, Kendra, I want to go back to you. And there was a recent report uh, released at the region with regard to active transportation health. And then the report states that while the percentage of residents that were inactive during their leisure time was slightly lower in Halton compared to Ontario at 46 percent, there is still room for improvement. I must say, when I read that report, I was surprised at the that percentage of people. I think back to um, uh, January the 1st, 1980, I made two great decisions, two great New Year's resolutions. Uh, first one was to quit smoking, uh, which I was successful at, and the second one was to join the Burlington Family YMCA, and I'm still a member, and I still go on average average throughout the year three to four times a week. So when I read the statistic that such a high percentage of people were physically inactive, that really surprised me. Can you comment on that? Yes, 39% of Halton residents are um, inactive. And so so we how do we define inactive? I mean, is that no exercise at all? I mean, they must, I mean, they must get out and walk a little bit. It's and, not enough for health benefits. I see. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, ways that we can help encourage people to be more active is to promote um, things like active transportation. And to do that, we need a comprehensive approach. So we want to um, do lots of different things in lots of different areas to add up to that, that goal of behavior change. So one of the things we want to have is work on developing supportive policies, encouraging people to uh, be walking and cycling, and also education and awareness and work on our partnerships to help achieve that. So it's a really interesting, um, we looked at some numbers. Back in 2006, we analyzed some numbers about how people were traveling to work and what were the built environment factors that facilitated people walking, cycling, and taking transit to work and what reduced driving. And we found that it, there were significant differences in areas where there, it was more walkable where things were close by and well connected and where we had accessible transit. So when we have supportive policies in place to support those kinds of built environment features, um, it goes a long way to promoting the actual behavior change. We actually see people um, doing those healthy behaviors of walking, cycling, and taking transit. And also supportive policies that help um, protect our vulnerable road users. Um, so people who are walking or cycling if we can have policies that support that as well. Uh, the other pieces around encouragement, I really want to emphasize how, how important small changes are and what a big impact they can have. So just replacing a few uh, short distance car trips with walking and cycling, not all your trips and not everyone, but just some people some of the time can make a huge public health impact in terms of reducing our risk of chronic disease and uh, particularly circulatory diseases and some types of cancer which are our top two um, top causes of death in Halton. And I think the city and the region and other community partners are doing wonderful things in this regard like the Think Outside the Car social media challenge, the Walking and Cycling to School initiatives, the the Smart Commute Bike to Work Day, um, <clears throat> the street festivals, the Jane's Walks, lots of these things are coming up this spring as well. So it's really exciting and I think cumulatively all these things working together can really help bring about more active transportation and change our inactivity numbers. You know, you know it's interesting that City of Burlington is, uh, we're going through the process of developing a strategic plan and vision for the next 25 years and we have almost have it uh, approved, it's about 80-90% done, it's being tweaked right now. We're going to get a final version in, in April I hope and we're going to put up our hands and, and support the direction. But there's four different directions, but the direction that um, the public most aden mostly identifies with is a healthy and greener city. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly health is, is critically important yes. uh, to the residents of our city and it's important as you say that we not just have policies in place, but we actually implement those policies that we have the right infrastructure to facilitate the walking and the cycling and, and the people to take uh, uh, transit. Uh, it's interesting, I go to Toronto a couple times a month, I'm on a, a few boards there related to the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, 
and, and, and I, do take, I do drive to the GO station, but once I get to Toronto, I walk from Union Station, I go up University Avenue, um, I don't think anything of it, I, I'll walk up to Queen's Park and I'll walk back to, uh, uh, to, the, to Union Station, I'm burning off a few calories and it feels good to get outside and, and get a little of, uh, fresh air. Um, you know, in between meetings, uh, it's, a, it's, it's very positive when you're using it. Right. And I, I would say that's active transportation, right? Yeah. And it, it, you're intermingling cycling and walking with um, transit. Yeah, and so what we really want to promote is how we can make those choices to be the easy choices. So making the healthy choice the easy choice. So what kinds of um, policies and supportive encouragement programs can we make on our end yeah. to, to get you to the GO station? <laughs> yeah. Karen, connecting with parents yeah. in the in the region of Halton, we have a population of 530 or 540,000 people throughout the region in four different municipalities. Um, how do you do that? Is social media one of the tools you use? Absolutely. Social media is one of the big tools that we use. Halton Parents is, uh, in addition to our website, and we have a great blog that uh, conveys lots of great information through stories. Uh, our blog writers are public health nurses themselves. So we have regular, we have regular updates on, the, on, these, on these blogs? Absolutely. From your public health nurses yes. that, that share best practices for lack of a yeah. better description? And they do it, they're real parents themselves. So right. our blog writers, and I'm one of them, um, we tell stories of ourselves about raising our children and the challenges we faced when we were raising our kids and what and then we weave in that information that we found useful and that's quality trusted um, information that what we would call evidence-based information so that you're getting really up-to-date current information on our blogs. Uh, so blogs is one of our social media platforms but we have two others so we are also on Facebook and on Twitter so uh, what Twitter good, handle is what? At Halton Parents. At Halton Parents. Yeah, and our Facebook is just facebook.com slash Halton Parents. Okay. So give us a like. But what's really uh, great about our Facebook and Twitter feed is there's a public health nurse behind that screen. Every single day during work business hours, um, you can connect with a public health nurse. You can shoot us a question. We are talking about all things parenting all the time. We have different posts. Uh, about different topics that are interesting and, and what parents want to know about and you have the opportunity to engage in that conversation. Chat with other parents, chat with a public health nurse. You can send us private messages if you have something more personal you want to ask us. Um, and our Twitter feed is also very active with different things that are happening in the community. So we share, you know, where can you go with your kids this weekend to have some family fun and you know, lots of different parenting tips that way. So what are you hearing from parents? What are some of the questions, more common questions that Halton Parents Program gets? Yeah, there's receives? definitely hot topics out there. Um, and so we try and cover all of them. So it really, the hot topics depend on how old your child is. Right. So when you're a parent of a baby, uh, the hot topics really tend to be about breastfeeding right. and feeding your baby, getting your baby to sleep, that type of thing. What happens if my baby's crying? So we talk about all those things. When we move into the toddler and preschooler years, it really switches to being all about behavior. So those dreaded temper tantrums, how do we cope with that? Um, so those are some of the, the younger kids ones. Car seat safety is always a hot topic. Parents have lots of questions about car seat safety, what car seat they should, should their baby be in, you know, when to switch them from rear facing to forward facing, all sorts of things like that. So those are some of our hottest topics, when, whether we write a blog or on Facebook or on Twitter. Um, and then as your child gets older, the topics change a little bit as you get into the school system. So uh, homework help is a hot topic. Um, issues like stress and anxiety in children who are a little bit older is a hot topic. We always get lots of discussion going on those topics. And bullying. And in fact, this week was actually Pink Shirt Day. So as a great example, uh, one of our blog writers wrote a great blog about bullying, published it on the blog, got a conversation going on the blog, but then we shared it on Facebook and Twitter, and parents are chiming in and discussing it, sharing ideas. Um, it's really great and it's relevant and topical and you know what's happening in the news today and what's affecting parents right now today. Great, amazing resource that it I think is. a lot of people won't know about so hopefully yeah. this program will help increase yeah. awareness. Yeah, we, uh, we love being in that social media space and while we're committed to being in the social media space we're also committed to helping parents uh, 
whether it's in person or on the telephone. So not all parenting problems and challenges are solved online. Mm -hmm. So um, you know we want parents to connect with us in person and really to access that information Great. and that support in the way they want to. Jane Ho, thank you very much, Karen. That was, that was wonderful. With regard to the alcohol misuse, what is the region doing to to, to minimize um, inappropriate consumption of uh, alcohol? So the health department has trained applicable staff on the low risk alcohol drinking guidelines and the health risks associated with that, and they in turn are sharing that with Halton residents. Um, we have updated the alcohol related content on our website, both for the public and for physicians. Um, one of our initiatives for 2016 is to encourage physicians to screen their patients for alcohol use and to promote the low risk alcohol drinking guidelines. So you work with physicians in the public health department? Uh, yes, yes. And, and trying to get information out there and, and, yes. and, and try to quantify what they're seeing yes. from their patients. Um, and we also, um, we have Halton Region Management and Health Department staff take part on, uh, on regional and provincial alcohol networks, okay. and we have most recently consulted with the province on their proposed alcohol policy framework. Great. So there's all sorts of resources that a lot of, a lot of people are not aware of, and I suggest they go to www.halton.ca and they can go slash Halton Parents. Halton Parents. They can go slash Walkable. And get active. Walkable and There's get active. They're just walkable or walkable? Sorry, halton.ca slash walkable right. or halton.ca slash get active. So, so two different websites mm -hmm. and for the... Slash alcohol. So halton.ca slash alcohol. So go to the halton.ca website. There's all sorts of information there. You can add a slash and add in any of the subjects material that our guests have talked about. And there's all sorts of other great information there that's a great resource for people with regard to health. So in any event, I want to thank uh, the three of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today on Burlington Matters. Kendra, Karen and Jane from Halton Region, thank you very much for uh, addressing uh, some of the, the key health issues within the region of Halton. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to Burlington Matters. If you have an idea for a guest or a topic of a future program, please contact the mayor's office at 905-335-7607 or at mayor at burlington.ca via email. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Burlington Matters.